So this is a socially responsible film. I honestly don't even know where to start, so I'm just going to let you guys talk at me. Oh, the last... I started off. I started off. <laughs> I started off for the love of God. I, this is not real life. <laughs> I stay around number of white people, and no, no white woman has come to my house and got mad at me for living in the community. No, nobody cares. I, I get sick of them painting black people as these victims. They, we either slaves in movies, or we somehow victim to white people worried about where we live in. It, 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 it kills me, it boils my blood that in 2021, they're acting like this stuff still persists. I can't find a white person that cares who's living next door, and just because they're black, they're gonna call the police, and now the police are involved in it, harassing black people. <laughs> where is this happening at in America? So what's actually happening it, is yeah. a film like this is actually harassing white people, right? So this is a blatantly racist film, right? right? Mm -hmm. this, is, this would be akin to white people making a film called Shanika and, 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 and letting it define every stereotype of what it means to be a black person, right? right. Like, you know, bumping music loud, going down the street. I mean, this is, this is painfully racist. And not even that, but they're incorporating this idea that being white is violence, right? That, that like being white is a form of violence. And they're taking it to that next step, despite all evidence to the contrary. Like, if you really wanted to look at shootings, uh, race, you know, the racial disparity in terms of shootings, if you wanted to, you know, like say, I'm looking at these statistics and I want to draw some conclusions, those conclusions wouldn't be right. But the conclusion would be from actual statistics right. that black people are more violent towards white people. But they ignore all of that because what's culturally relevant right now is pretending it's the other way around. Excuse me, police, black people just moved into my neighborhood. What am I supposed to do? You've never they, done that? I mean, that's all white people do, right? You know, oh my God. Right? That's all, yeah. 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 I had to call the police before I've I came on the show to call it on my you. Coat. Yeah. You know? yeah. I have my Confederate <laughs> lotion dispenser. That's <laughs> what we too, you know? uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. When the left can't find real racism, they create racism out of nothing. Exactly. If they had real stories to tell, if they had real things to talk about, they wouldn't have to create this stupid movie with Hollywood actresses. They could actually say something that is culturally relevant and going on, but no, they have to create lies to push their narrative. Well, do you, I, this seems to me to date back to that Jordan Peele movie, Get Out. Do you guys remember? Yeah. I actually kind of liked that movie, I, sh I should say, at the outset, but it, it inaugurated this genre, right? Social horror. And there's a, there's a show on, on Amazon right now called Them, which is almost as bad as Karen. I mean, it's one degree away. And this is the sort of thing that you would do if you had a government that wanted to create propaganda to stoke a race war, right? right? This is what, if you were just sitting in your ivory tower and thinking, how am I going to drive Americans at one another's throats so that, once again, we can and federalize the police force and enforce wokeness at the national level, right? This is what you would make. You would make this stuff because, as you say, of course, like, all their ideas are lies. They have to invent ways to try to, like, hypnotize you into believing them. And this is, like, Pravda 101. It's just right. classic. What does this do? This tells black people moving into neighborhoods that are maybe more white that, oh, you can't move into this neighborhood because you're going to be assaulted or someone's going to be racist towards you. It's like it's creating segregation in itself because it tells black people that they can't move into these neighborhoods. Right. Because if you do, you're going to be ostracized by the other people. And, it's a horrible message to send to people. And to Candace's point, I mean, let's keep it real. Let's make, a, let's make one call Tyrone. Mm -hmm. or, 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 or Latrell or somebody. And then they're doing drive-bys every day and walking around with their pants sagging and selling drugs. I mean, if you want to put these stereotypes, let's do it on both sides. But it, it, it's, it's crazy that they're doing this because it does create this in young people. I mean, when I was growing up, I believed that white people hated me. Mm. I did. And this is reinforcing that stuff. So when you make money or you grow up and get out of the hood and you go live in a nice neighborhood that happened to be white people live in it, you, you're going to perceive them like this. You're going to think that your neighbors, even though they just wave at you and say hi, you're going to think that they have, they're out to get you. And it creates this residual effect of people hating each other and projecting racism on each other when it's not even happening. That's exactly right. And then it also makes it impossible for people to have normal correspondences without racializing the correspondence in their own head. Like, everybody goes through things that are just not fun. Like, you know, you get cut off. You get cut off when you're driving and somebody flips you the finger. Well, now, if you're a black person and that happens between a white, you know, but you and a white person, you go, oh, that's because I'm black. And it's like, no, that's because it happens to everyone. I mean, my husband had this story where he was talking to one of his friends um, who said, you know, he's mixed and, and he, you know, looks like he's half black, half white, because that's what he is. And he said, well, you know, as a black person, there's been so many times where I've been at a club or slept outside and someone tried to hand me the keys uh, as if I was the ballet, ballet. And my husband said back to him, do you know that also happens to me? Hmm. Like, it's just, so like, you're almost training people to see racism where it's not. You know, yes. we have bad correspondences because we're human beings and you're not gonna like every person. It's not gonna be a good correspondence. But now you're training people to believe that every time you have a correspondence with a white person, it's because they're being a Karen. 
right? Every bad correspondence to the black person is because they're being a Shaniqua. This is literally racism and it's being taught and it is a propagandist effort. CEO of Turning Point USA, if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Turning Point USA.